Good morning. It is Sunday, November 11th, 2018, at approximately 8.27 in the morning here in Sierra Vista, Arizona, along the international border within the Constitution Free Zone. My name is Michael DiCarlo, and this is DiCarlosDanger.com. It's been a, about a week or so since I per, created a video, so I thought I'd upload one here and tell the folks that actually uh, delegated their vote to me or voted for me to delegate, de delegate their voice to the, in the United States Senate. Thank you very much. Uh, we're, it looks like I'm going to come up a wee bit short, but uh, it's no, not that it wasn't expected. Uh, throughout the state, there's about 3,000 write-in votes. There were six write-in candidates. We'll see how that pans out. Uh, they're still counting votes here in Cochise County and around the state, especially when it comes to write-in candidates. Uh, locally, the election for mayor is a topic that's kind of unique. It's separated between uh, two to 300 votes with about 1,700 votes that need to be verified in the county. They're not all going to be city votes, so it's going to be tight one way or the other. Uh, I wish them, yeah. We're as divided down here on the border as the country is at large. In the national news, Things that kind of concern me a little bit, and I'm this is my second time I'm doing this video, doing this, trying to do this. The first time the audio didn't come out at all, so I took out the the headphone microphone. We're trying to just to do this on the computer. Uh, the wildfires and the shootings in California coincide with uh, redirection to keep your eyes away from Florida and the vote count there. The only reason I'm con I'm not concerned about the vote count here in, in Arizona, especially Cochise County. We got a du uh, duly elected representatives, supervisors that over oversee this stuff. And if it doesn't, if we don't agree with it, then we can vote those people out. I mean, that's just the way the system is. Okay, you delegate your vote. You vote for somebody to delegate your voice in the this the process. And if you don't believe that they're doing a good job, you can get a chance to vote them out. Here in two year in two years, we have an opportunity to put someone new in charge if we don't. If we don't agree, uh, think that they're doing a good job, uh, this this wildfires out there in California. This is happens every year. It is it's it's not it, not, it it's numerous times a year that there's fires out west, and they're all fires on federal land, uh, or along federal land, or along state land. It's these forested areas are the when you're managing something, you're managing a problem. A lot of times when government manages problems, they create more problems. It's called the Cobra Effect. Uh, you could do some background and research on the Cobra Effect, and you might come to the same conclusion I did uh, regarding that. But these fires are nothing new, and the next time they'll have rain, they'll have mudslides, and it's just a cycle that continues to go on out there, and the only reason people keep building is because the insurance companies keep paying. It's, those are sad facts and realities. In local news around the border, I attended the first city council meeting in a couple months on Thursday. I watched the work session on Tuesday. And it was a, just was like a, a bunch of horse trading going on between the city and the county. And it kind of concerned me a, a, quite a bit because there's a portion, there's portions of towns out west from the original settlements that did not become part of the cities after the cities were established. And that was for various reasons. Either they thought that they had enough freedom in their area and they didn't want to participate in further diluting their representation through the process, or they didn't want to be taxed more for being part of the city. Either way, it's, it's their own decision and their own voice, you know, their body, their choice, their property, their choice. But if any of you have watched, if you have Netflix, I, I would uh, ask you to watch, it'll take a couple hours, uh, uh, the, the miniseries or the series Turn that was on AMC about Washington Spies. If you watch episode three and episode four of the first season, this is what I see happening in my own town. For the last 20 years, they've been, the city has been trying to annex Fry Township. Fine Township was part of the original settlement out here. There's a cemetery out there, 
it's on the National Historical Register site or something like that. That's, that's what I, whatever the, they, the, the assistant city manager said at the, the last council meeting. But however, in 07 or 08, the city beca had, became part owner of this cemetery. So we won't, if you won't, an an if you won't be annexed when you're alive, we'll take you when you're dead, train of thought. But they, through the historical society and some horse trading, they traded a portion of the second half for four pieces of property, four houses that the city owns in town for cemetery plots. Weird. Also, the fire department wants ventilation system, a new ventilation system that cost $65,000, but they're giving away a, a trailer that they could have sold for $6,500. They gave it away to the county, to this uh, Pierce, for its uh, advertising safe house fire day or whatever. It, it's a good it's a good deed it's a good deed but when you're begging for money you shouldn't be giving away your property nobody none of us would do it plus the outgoing fire chief chief york thank you for your service appreciate it man you did a great job being a leader of the fire department but however one of the things that you did say was that cancer is the number one killer of firefighters and that was the reason for the ventilation system cancer is the number one killer of a lot of people <clears throat> in certain occupational fields. But I would submit to that most likely that the geographic area where this cancer is concentrated is probably going to be in southern New England or northern or the northern mid-Atlantic and the evil empire, I'll call it, from a kid from Cleveland. One thing that I did speak on at the last council meeting was this DEA grant. This DEA grant, and it wasn't upon, it wasn't about keep, it's not about keeping the drugs out of the schools or nothing like that. The reason that I rose and I spoke was because there are certain criteria in it that just doesn't add up. It doesn't pass the smell test. One is permitting a police officer to be employed by the city to live 50 miles away, 50 miles away. It's, this isn't a metropolitan area, folks. This is a sky island. There are, everything out here is usually separated, except for the major metropolitan areas. It's usually separated by about 30 miles. And that's how far a train could go until from one point to another until it needed more water. You can see this along the interstate the main, where there's towns that were once railroad stops and that are now either ghost towns or barely hanging on or they have some little small amount of industry that keeps them functional. But we're allowing a guy to more or less almost move, live in Tucson and, and be paid here. And that exceeds the, through a bureaucratic method, we've actually kind of made the unelected police chief more powerful than the duly elected sheriff of this county. But when you live within a Constitution-free zone, the confines that the Constitution creates for the government, the box that it creates for it to operate in, can be violated. It, it, and there's no, there's no check, right? So they're going to pay this cat about an eighteen hundred or eighteen thousand dollars more in overtime, which is going to is going to elevate his salary. And when you elevate their a officer's salary, you're elevating their pension on the back end. And this grant explicitly states in bold letters that pensions are not funded in this. We currently have a three quarters of a million dollar shortfall in the PSPRS system. And this, I suspect that this has all been created by grants like this, grants like the Operation Stone Garden, which is supposed to be drug enforcement and illegal and illegal immigrant stuff uh, that we get. I mean, there's like $4 million or whatever. You can go to the uh, Open Books Sheriff's Department and you can figure out it's a two, 201 or 301 files where this money comes in. Uh, we're burying ourselves in debt that is unsustainable 
that we, we will never be able to pay back. We'll never, 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 never. And if you open up a dollar, if you take a dollar out of your wallet or out of your purse and you look at it where it says this Federal Reserve note is for all debts, public and private. It means that no matter how many, how high you can stack those dollars, whether they be ones, tens, twenties, hundreds, whatever, they're just a pile of debt. That's all it is. It's a pile of debt. They just print more. Print more debt. Okay? I did, as a counterproposal, since they're moving, they're expanding their footprint 50 miles from town. I don't know. I doubt it's even the center of town. They've annexed the Fort, Fort Huachuca was annexed for population count in the 70s. So 50 miles from the edge of Fort Huachuca goes into darn, darn near into Nogales. It, almost, it goes nearly to, to Douglas. It, it encompasses Bisbee. The place where this should be done would be at the county seat in Bisbee. It should be managed by the sheriff because that way it, that all that money could be properly used within the county and not exceed the boundaries. That way the police chief, who was unelected, so we'll call him a bureaucrat, and I like, and I like Adam, he's a nice guy, is, has become more powerful than based upon the in, intelligence collection, information exchange, and every if every soldier is a censor, every police officer is a censor. If every police officer is a censor, every citizen is a censor. This just doesn't sm pass the sniff test on the liberty end at all. This is tyranny. This is fraud, waste, and abuse. So what I did is I counterproposed since they're moving 50 miles away that we should all, it, residents in Sierra Vista should all be able to grow 50 cannabis plants in their backyard. That way we can take about a third of the, the drug enforcement part off of the table, limiting, not limiting, but minimizing the requirement for these officers to have to go out and do their job so they can con concentrate on the real issues at hand, the real issues. But see, all this stuff goes into play here because we've got soldiers guarding opium fields in Afghanistan. Are you aware of that? The Afghan Afghanistan is the world's producer, world leading producer of opium, which goes into your oxycodone and your opiates and your illegal fentanyl coming from China. There's China stuff's a ruse, guys. China and this recycling, this is recycling old news. China is a trading partner of ours. China took a lot of steel at one time and brought it back and dumped it on us. Okay, that's why the administration increased the tariffs. Where did that steel come from? Did it come from the evil empire area at a certain time? Where most places it would be considered a, a, crim, a crime that would need to be investigated. But if it's considered war, it's just buried. The first thing that suffers in, in war is the truth, folks. The first thing that suffers in war is the truth. First thing that suffers in service to your country is the truth. There's only so many folks that actually get to read messages and understand the play at hand. I can't remember what I read, but I do, do know that some things just didn't add up. Well, anyway, on the brighter note, I want to thank uh, Bootleg Racing League for inviting me to join their league on iRacing.com. I was able to be broadcast on YouTube last night. Picked up a couple spots. Started in the back. I think we got started 18th and finished 15th. It caused one caution, but it was due to net code. We, net code is where it says you hit, but there's really plenty of space between the vehicles. Just our internet connections just thought we were somewhere else but it was an enjoyable time they're trying to finish up a sponsorship deal for next year and they have openings for sponsorships for races so if you're interested in those advertising your business or your blog or whatever send me an email at michael at decarloenterprises.net and we'll see what we can do we'll get a hold of those guys and see if we can get you some ad space and get maybe a couple minute commercial. Peace out, guys. Be well. It's the 11th of November. It's Veterans Day. It's my brothers and sisters in arms. Thank you for what you do, what you did, and I love you all.
everybody else. Hi, mom. Hi, kids. Take care. Love you. Bye.